So yeah, I mean, uh, we'll start we'll start this live stream off by saying the obvious. Post Malone has purchased the one out of one ring. So the story has come full circle. Oh, <laughs> like a ring. So <laughs> there's not that many details to be real. The uh, the original setup was some guy found the one ring. It turned out to be a guy who worked in a warehouse. And now there's video footage of him selling the card to uh, Post Malone. And Post Malone going, yeah, I'll take it. While the guy who's selling it to him is like tearing up out of excitement. It's like, as far as things go, Wizards hit a home run with this marketing. It worked out really well. Because like watching that, like Post Malone is super likable. He's a super likable dude. And so it's just like, you've got a super likable personality who's straight up buying it off this other guy, giving him a life-changing amount of money. It's got, like, the offer we knew about was at least a million. So I imagine that he probably got paid more than that million, unless there's a premium for him for selling to Post Malone, you know, where it's like, selling to him was a big deal to me. But I imagine he got paid more than a million dollars for that. We don't know the actual price, like, for real. Speaking of prices, random person says, I own the board tonight. Sorry, not sorry. Proud, strong declaration being made here. And I mean, look at that. Look at the new Lord of the Board setup. Look at that beautiful magnet with the epic sword. I can see why you would want to take dominance on that board, bro. So, random person, you are now Lord of the Board. There you go, Big Papa. Uh, Jess, what did he spend? Also, you sent me Bigfoot evidence. Why are you super chatting me to try and say insane nonsense to me? What did he spend? I'm guessing upwards of a million. They didn't say because at the end of the day, it's a private sale. So who knows? Maybe it was $800,000 and a deep kiss from Post Malone where he has to keep his eyes open the entire time and you stare at that tattoos under his eyes that say always tired and you say, I've always been tired of not being kissed by you, Post Malone. My life is going into the post Post Malone era. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Astrid Media says, spreading the word about River Song, first of kind. What does that mean? What do you mean River Song is first of her kind? Huh? What what does that specifically mean? Also, Jess, come on, man. There taint no Bigfoot. We're here to talk about Post Malone. You know what? I started to think about his name, Post Malone, and my brain started to go like, what if wizards was only going to try and sell stuff to Post Malone going forwards. What if they were just like, we're going to make million dollar cards and try and... Like, because they didn't get that million dollars. They used it to sell, like, their packs, but they didn't get the money from that single. So they got to be thinking, like, how do we get celebrities to pay us millions of dollars for cards now, right? There's got to be somebody over there who's got to, like, brainstorm it. How are we getting this? How are we getting this? You know? <laughs> like, how, how do we do this? How do we do this? Oh, Astrid, the fact that uh, River Song lets you draw from the bottom of the library. Yeah, it definitely is different. You can do a bunch of goofy stuff. You can play like Teferi's Puzzle Box and just get confusing with it. <laughs> it's like, uh, wait, what are we doing now? Man. So, yeah, if, like, Wizards just started, like, trying to market towards Post Malone, where it's like, all our unique cards are going to end up in Post Malone's hands, so how do we make them tempting for him specifically? And we go into, like, the Post Malone era of magic, the Post Magic Alone, because it's Post Malone, and it's got Alone in his name, and the M is at the beginning, and you use that for magic. I feel like I need a visual. I feel like I need a visual for this, but... If you can understand what I'm saying, it makes sense. Design your own magic card for $100,000. It's so cynical, Jeremy. I love it. I love it. That absolutely could be the route that they go with this. That's hilarious. Uh, that's, yeah, that's a, that's a funny idea. I mean, they already started making cards with Post Malone on it, right? 
Daniel, isn't Post Malone paid by Wizards to promote? They had like, we're going to have a whole year of FNMs with Post Malone and then nothing happened. It's probably because Post Malone is like way bigger than Wizards of the Coast. You know what I mean? Like way more people are fans of Post Malone and he's way more popular than Wizards of the Coast is. And there's more demands on his time. So I imagine they probably were like, hey, man, we were thinking about doing this thing. And he's like, hey, sounds good. And then they just were like, we're going to announce it. And then went, oh, um, well, who cares? We say all kinds of stuff that never comes true. We lie to our customers all the time. So who even cares, right? Secret layer drawn by Post Malone. Yeah, I thought it was a joke at first when I saw the... Uh, the terrible like scrawled crap on the cards and I was just like yeah I guess there's secret layers for everybody I like Post Malone I like his music oh that made me think there's that one song he has um I don't remember all the lyrics or whatever I think he's got like a gold baseball bat in it or whatever and just the one of the lines is like uh, it's talking about having money and like this lady asking if she can have money to hold and how he can never be saying no. And my mind just played it with him singing wizards asking for the money and he can never be saying no. And I just started laughing like wizards is there like one of these gold diggers like can I have some money posty please. And he's like I can't say no to you. What do you how much do you want for your little rectangles. <laughs> Oh, man. So, bro, like, as far as, like, a fairy tale pretty woman story goes, you get that feel-good moment for real. It's not, it doesn't, it's not one of those scenarios where it's like, check it out. This big store got it, and now they're just selling it in a private sale to some rich guy. You have your pretty woman in the middle. You have your little, um, what was her name? Julia Roberts, right? You have your Julia Roberts in there getting a little <laughs> snap shut kind of thing going on, Right? He looked so happy selling the card to Post Malone. So, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. I, I, you can't predict life, man. Never in a million years would I have predicted that magic would last for 30 years. And never would I predict that, like, I'd be like, yo, imagine going back in time and being like, yo, yo, Nostradamus this, bro. I'm going to tell you right now. You know this collector's edition? that nobody wants to pay like anything for because it's garbage and we don't want gold back, it's nothing. We don't want any of it, right? Um, what if I told you that in the future people started playing with this kind of stuff so much that wizards thought they could sell packs that had gold backs like this for 250 bucks a piece? And you'd be like, that'll never happen. It totally did. And like, there'll be like rappers that are paying millions of dollars. It's like, and also there'll be a rapper with a bunch of stuff tattooed on his face that will pay a million dollars for a Frodo Lord of the Rings, don't touch the ring, Frodo ring. And it's like, I I'm sorry, degenerate. What are you talking about? I haven't huffed enough paint to know, to, to know how to process what nonsense this is. But that's the reality. That's the reality. I played magic 30 years ago as a kid. And now somehow I'm the magic historian. And Post Malone bought the one ring. Magic the Gathering's one ring. And even crazier is when they introduced Kaladesh, I went on a tirade. I was like, I hate helicopters in Magic. Stupid egg helicopters. Check it out. Only smugglers use helicopters. Well, I guess if I was in charge of security, I'd be like, hey, there's a helicopter. Yeah, destroy it. Only smugglers use helicopters. There's no helicopters anywhere else. Stupid egg helicopter. And trains and cars that need like ruts in the ground like the fleet wheel cruiser we're fighting in the forest summon up the fleet wheel cruiser summon up some pavers make a road beep beep and traffic lights and you're just like this makes no sense this is so stupid so i made a video ranting and i'm like what's next i'm like do you guys remember do you remember in lord of the rings when gandalf drove a tank i pointed that out as an absurd concept to try and show how crazy it is that magic had helicopters and like stupid cars and stuff. All this dumb nonsense. Stick with ornithopters and all like, that's it, airships. You know, that kind of stuff where it's like, check it out, it's a boat that flies. It's really easy to keep it in the magic world. So I make a joke about Gandalf driving a tank and then Wizards is just like, that's a good idea. So they put tanks in magic and then they're like, now here's Gandalf and now Gandalf can drive a tank. Have fun with the dickhead. <laughs> Wow.
Prophet says it's my fault because I chose because I became the story and the universe chose the crazy timeline. No, I was never meant to do this. <laughs> I've, I've ruined I've ruined the universe. That's terrible. Is the video with the Gandalf and the tank joke still up? I have no idea. I have no idea if the cal the my guess is that got like cut down when YouTube got all squonky and I had to do the great night of purging and delete hundreds and hundreds of videos and live streams because YouTube was like, we don't like any of this. And they were way more picky. And it was it was a harsh time. It was hard to get through. I had to sacrifice a lot of my children to keep the family going. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if it's still around. But I remember. Someone was holding a monkey ball watching that video. It's crazy. It's crazy to watch it happen, right? For real. What a bizarre world. The whole The whole thing of it. So yeah, Post Malone now owns the One Ring. I, the, honestly, I wasn't, I wasn't really predicting that, but now I'm just like, is he gonna buy all the One Ofs? Everybody wants to know how much he paid. So do I, guys. So do I. Your guess is as good as mine, right? I mean, logic to me says the base level we were seeing tossed around was a million, right? So. I'm guessing he exceeded that million. He's probably like, yo, I'll beat that million. That's it. I'm guessing it was more than a million. I have no idea if he beat all standing offers because I have no idea how legitimate all standing offers were. I don't know how legit the $2 million offer was. And also, I don't know the exact exchange rate between the currencies that all these offers were being made in. So it's 100% like purely speculative. We just know for a fact that it was sold. I don't know if the amount will ever be revealed, so... Will Post Malone destroy it? You know he's not gonna. But you know a bunch of people are calling on it. Like, yo, you should do that. He's got like, like how, how many people would even have the money to buy that kind of, yo, I'm just, I own this card because it's cool. I got this card now. It's mine. It's pretty nutty. It's got to be sweet though, man. It's got to feel amazing to just be like, yeah, you know what? Yo, did you, you got that super rare thing? What is it? A million dollars? Yeah, sure. Hold on. Let me just check what I got in my pocket. Yeah, I got a couple million in there. Whatever, man. I made this yesterday. Have one. Like, it's, you know, like, <laughs> that's got to feel good. That's got to feel good. Uh, Kodak, yeah. Yeah, he does have an Alpha Lotus, bro. He's got that, like, that, that was the most pricey magic card he had purchased up until this point. Now this one costs more. <laughs> it's amazing. I suppose with an end buyer like that, maybe there is something else that, like, I thought, hey, how are they going to top this Lord of the Rings stuff? How are they going to get a big hype? But when people see that Post Malone bought this, like it's publicly sold. People have seen that now. That works really well for Wizards because it means, yo, if you get the one out of one, some celebrity with way too much money is gonna hook you up and you'll get to meet them. You'll get to meet them too. It's amazing. It's, it's amazing from a promotional standpoint for Wizards. Millmaster says no person has the power to have everything they want, but it is in their power not to want what they don't have. Oh, fucking Buddha. Oh, Mr. Buddha on the mountaintop. Oh, just don't want it, peasants. You know what? It's also within your power to hate everything you have and feel like it's not enough. Let this make you miserable. <laughs> Let this make you miserable and bitter for not having it. Take that, Mill Master. I see your boot on the mountaintop, and I raise it with a spiteful demon of jealousy and greed. Nobody should have what I don't have. Oh! Oh, send your waves of spite out into the universe. How dare he? How dare he? <laughs> How dare anybody have more than me ever? 
No, I'm bitter. Everything I have is ashes in my mouth. I don't even love my wife anymore. Now that Post Malone fucking bought that card, I don't even love my wife anymore. I'm gonna leave her ass. That's it. I don't love her. Food tastes like garbage. There's no point in being alive. This ruined my life. I'm gonna sue Wizards of the Coast and Post Malone's ball bag straight off of his body. And then I'm gonna sell that shit on eBay. Because there's some ladies who would pay a lot of money for that. <laughs> oh, I'm glad that I'm just some mid-tier magic YouTuber and there's no chance that Post Malone will ever hear me talk about selling his ball bag to ladies on eBay. <laughs> Millmaster, save it for the Matrix reboot. Consumerism, consumerism is programming. You can be deprogrammed. I want to be more programmed. I want wizards to press my biggest buttons of delight, all right? <laughs> Jess, uh, Super Chat says, book trafted and sold, book trafted and sold it for two million to post, says goo. Says you. Who's goo? Well, according to Jess, Jess's cryptic Super Chat, Brooke Trafton, I mean, that guy's name, he does sound like a rich dude. That sounds like a rich dude's name, but he's, as far as I understand, he is your regular everyday citizen, so... <laughs> He's got a name that goes with the money that he got. Mr. Trafton, the caviar is ready to be smeared on your ball bag. Excellent! Tell Post Malone I'm ready for his private performance. It's like he's not going to perform for you. He just bought the card off of you. Silence, peasant! Silence, spread the caviar. <laughs> <laughs> According to Goo, he paid two million dollars, but I don't know how I don't know how reliable Google or Goo is. I'm assuming it's I'm assuming it's Google. I'm assuming it's Google, right? Was the one ring graded? Yes, actually. There was competition around grading the one ring. It ended up PSA got to do the grading. BGS actually offered to make a specialized uh, label that would go on the one ring. But by the time they had made the offer, the card had actually already been found and secretly ferried off for grading. It was told that it was like taken overnight. Like a guy came down and was like, yeah, yeah, you know, we heard a bunch of people have the ring. You got the ring, sure. And then he's like, oh, shit, this is the ring. And he's like, let me take it back so we can grade it a nine. Because <laughs> wizards, wizards wouldn't bring it in because they're clowns. Oh, but hey, whatever. You know, Post Malone played with his own card before he got it graded, so it's just got an 8. Now he's got multiple non-10 graded cards. Although when they're one of a kind, what does the grade even matter? For authenticity in this case, I guess. I guess all the most special magic cards are just going to end up in little plastic slabs on display on a shelf of somebody who occasionally look at, looks at them when they're not banging like 15 supermodels and I presume doing drugs I've never even heard of because they're way too expensive for me. And I assume that because that's what I'd be doing. I'd be like, yo, I'm going to go put this one ring up on the shelf and then I'm going to bang hoes until I pass out, right? So actually now that, I, now that I've lost faith in existence and don't care about my wife, I guess that's going to be what I do anyways. Right? Just a, just a lower tier of that, right? I'm going to have to find ladies that like, yo, ladies, who wants to suck it for a 30th edition gray ogre? Who wants to touch my gray ogre for a magic 30th gray ogre? Bitch, look, wizard said these packs are 250 bucks. This gray ogre is worth like 12 bucks. Looking at you, right, and the number of teeth you got, you're worth like 8 bucks. So that's a 50% tip for you, so... 50% of my tip. You know what I'm saying? Let's go, Toothy. Let's go. Was the seller Canadian? Yeah, it was found in Canada. It was a Canadian. So he's getting American money. 
And let me let you in on a little secret that's not really a secret about American to Canadian money relations. They are fantastic for Canadians when you go, yo, here you go, have some American monies. The exchange rate goes, yo, take like a 25% bonus on that, son. Right? So it's like, here's 100 bucks. Nah, try 125, right? So if it was a million, it's like, here's a million American dollars. I mean, 1.25 million. Do you know what I mean? Like, for real. What? That's amazing. That's amazing. I'm losing my mind. Uh, it's losing it. It's gone. That's it. This is, this is the equivalent of a zoo, man. I slap a title on there. To lure poor unsuspecting people in here or expecting information and then I say something that could be summed up in a sentence online because that's literally all there is and then I just spew gibberish and madness into their minds and break them break them with Cthulian insanity or just boredom whatever whatever it is it's all just a fucking trick it's all a trap so yeah my mind's long gone son Seth, you think a $60 collector pack seems like a deal? I'd still a thumb. That's still a thumb right in your ass to me, bro. That's it. That's it. I'm just I'm just here to preside over the ridiculousness that is my live stream. Man, I've drank a lot of this root beer pretty damn quick. We haven't even been here this long, man. Alright, well whatever. Doesn't matter. Top ups required. I'll be back. I ain't doing this without enough sugar water. Talk amongst yourselves. Don't copy each other's answers, though. All right. What network are we on? Is that, oh, hold on. You're watching The Hand. But geek. There you go. There you go, that was a quick one. That was a quick one. All right, I got more barks. Oh, so of, the, of that stash that I found, of six boxes, three are gone. I've gone through 50% of my bark stash and I have not been able to locate any more. It is dwindling and I'm becoming desperate. <laughs> well, you know some nuts out there making an NFT commemorating Post Malone's purchase of the One Ring. Is it, are people still trying to do that NFT stuff, man? I thought that that bubble all burst and collapsed when like crypto just fell apart and turned into even more insanity than before. And then with it, NFTs were revealed for the complete scam that they are. It's insane, man. The NFT stuff is wild. It's wild. Yeah, I don't know, man. So yeah, I guess I shouldn't be surprised if some people are still doing it, but I thought that was, I thought that was done for. 
NFTs, man, that's wild. I don't see companies trying to push NFTs, right? It's too bad that, uh, it's too bad that like conceptually the idea of like transferable digital objects in games and things, the same way that you can trade magic cards in magic online, there's kind of something to that, but whatever it, whatever it needs to be, it sure as hell ain't there. So it's just this big old massive scam where it's like, you just look at it and go, what is this? What? Like, bro, I got approached by a bunch of, do you know how many different crypto companies tried to do sponsorships with me? And I was just like, no, there was the one, the, the, the closest crypto game that I ever dealt with. I'll never say the name of it, although I remember it because the interactions were hilarious to me where they like came, they came to live streams and stuff and they were like, yo, like check out our, check out our game on whatever it's crypto, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, well, I don't really know anything about this stuff. So, like, why don't you tell me what's good about your game? The guy couldn't tell me what was good about the game. He was just telling me that I should play it and I would get some crypto or whatever. And then he was being rude. I'm like, bro, this is like you say you're working for the company. This is literally the opportunity to just, like, sell the game what it is. Let me know, right? And he just was, like, being a dickhead. So then later on, I got an email from the company going, hey, man, we want to work with you. And I was like... Oh, no, I'm not working with you, man. You have people from your company coming in and being knobs and, like, all this other stuff. And then, then he's like, hey, do you mind telling me who that was? And, when, and I thought I was just like, no, I'm not telling you any of it because I don't even want to help your company at this point. Like, forget it. Forget it. I'm happy you're stuck with this person because now I think it's all a big scam and I don't want anything to do with you. So I'm going to let that guy keep running amok and screwing it up for you. And then every other, like crypto nft thing that ever contacted me i just looked at it and was like there's no way man there's no way i'm not ever taking on advertisers that are scams bro no chance no chance there's some people who are getting sued some youtubers are getting sued over their involvement with crypto and promote it and stuff and it's like what do you think man like this crypto sphere and everything people think like yo uh guess what the financial regulators don't know how to regulate it. That means I can commit crimes. No. No, it absolutely doesn't. And you know what else? You're on the internet. And like this like crypto stuff, everything has, it's all tracked. It's, it's all transactions. There's the ledger and all of it's tracked. And none of you are smart enough to pull this all off. So all these insane rug pulls where you thought you were clever... You're gonna you're gonna have to make good. Like, you know, people are coming for you. It's it's ridiculous. It's absurdity. It's craziness. So I'm glad I never got caught up in all that silliness. Only real sponsorships. So yeah. Going forwards, is it just going to be a matter of people going, hey, well, you can sell celebrities expensive magic cards. And that's how it's going to go. Just bam. That means it's like, yo, let's play this lottery ticket card even harder. It seems, I don't know. What is all this even built on anymore, bro? <laughs> what is this all built on? What the fuck is magic built on anymore? I don't understand. I'm going crazy. When I stop and actually look at it, like when I take a few steps back, I'm like, this is all crazy. This is all crazy. This was a game. Once upon a time, Magic was a game. And we just played it and got the cards. And like for 25 years or so, that's kind of how things went. And then for the last five years, they've just been like, Oh, let's go let's get the money let's triple the prices let's cut the quality let's try every insane crazy thing we can think of to build these idiots now right and you're just going yo what happened to like the 25 years of just doing it right and keep going like why are you, why are you burning everything to the ground now what is happening what is happening so yeah now it's just like Insane, oh, welcome to Lord of the Rings. We made a million dollar card. Okay, there's a rapper guy who plays magic and he's got it now. Uh, what? <laughs> what is happening? Oh, random person. 
You played before tournament rules existed. You traded a Mox Emerald for 10 Giant Growths. Go ahead, you deserve it. Listen, man. Everybody at the beginning looked at Mox Emerald like it was shit. I remember looking at Mox Emerald in the display case for 15 bucks and saying, what fucking idiot would pay $15 for a forest? What dumb bastard would pay that? You know what I mean? So, oh, and you want, you want to talk about, you want to talk about trades? You want to talk? Okay. Okay. Is that what we're doing? Is that what we're doing? We're talking about, are we talking about deep pain? Let's find the deep pain. Do I have the deep pain within reach? The deep pain? Do you want to talk deep pain? You traded magic cards. You traded magic cards. Where is he? There they are. There they are. Now let me show you something, pal. Let me show you something. Look at this. Oh, doesn't this look like a fun game? You know what this is? This is Wyvern. This is Wyvern, bro. This is Wyvern. Let me show you some Wyvern cards. Let me show you some Wyvern cards. Because you traded your Mox Emerald for Giant Gross that you played with Magic cards. Look at these. Ooh. Oh, wow. Look at that. Woo. Oh. Hey. Whoop de doo. Oh, look. Look. Where was that one? Look at me. Look at, look at me. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, guess who traded? Guess who traded? Guess who traded Time Walk? Guess who traded Time Walk for Wyvern? So, yeah. Oh, wow, your terrible trade. Your terrible trade. You traded a, a Mox Emerald for playable cards. You traded for playable cards. Like, this is so bad that it broke my stream. It's so bad. It's so bad the stream is struggling. The stream is struggling from how brutal that is. Right? Oh, you got the... You, <laughs> You got your regrets over giant growths? Wyvern, man. Wyvern. Time walk, bro. Time walk. That's, that's the real pain. That's the real pain. If you want to live in the past and be like, yo, this sucks. This sucks. <laughs> Luca Ravioli, what are my current thoughts on MTGO Redemption? That's one of the things that makes MTGO way better than Arena. The fact that you can have at least a small avenue to take some of the money you've put into the game and extract it back out. That's always been one of the enjoyable aspects of Magic that helped to offset the fact that it's such an expensive hobby. Is you're like, yo... It's costing me a bunch of money to play this game, but at the same time, I have these cards. I can trade them for other cards and whatever. There's some little value to go with it, which is a nice little bonus. But Wizards is kind of like, we don't do that anymore. We want you to think that's how it still works, but we want all the money. So, yeah. Now it's, uh, you know, magic. Uh, MTGO Redemption's way better. Way better than Arena. Because you can collect up some sets of cards if you want the new sets. It is pretty limited. But at least it exists, right? Random, it's making you laugh so hard your pain's been lightened for the first time in years. You're free! Picture! Picture! Picture the dismay. You know, it didn't take long before my happiness over getting the wyvern turned into sorrow. It turned into sorrow. And I remember it decades later. You were right, Random, by the way. When you said the board was yours, nobody has contested it. Sometimes when people come out with that kind of swing, other people are like, no, no, no. But everyone's like, all right, cool, cool. At least if it's worth nothing, you can burn it for heat. Well, Tyson, you know what, buddy? I got to give you credit. You came up with something that wire cards are good for. Kindling. At least, at least there's that. At least there's that. I can burn the, burn the sadness away. Watch the demons fly into the sky. Off you go! Krakening, uh, MTGO is Magic the Gathering Online. It's the earlier version of Magic Arena. They created it decades ago, 
it is ugly and clunky as an interface compared to Arena. It's pretty tedious, to be honest. But you can actually get access to all the magic cards on it. So there is that. You can you can basically play all the magic on there. You can't do that. Um, you can't do that on Arena. It's got bugs too. It's not perfect, but it's better for playing Magic than Arena is in terms of a one-to-one -one Magic experience. But it's clunky, man. It's clunky. I have a hard time playing on uh, MTGO, to be real. Why don't I start hosting fun tournaments? I ran tournaments for years and years, man. I'm good. I'm good. You know? I can go a long, I can go a long time before I need to run another tournament. Running tournaments comes with a lot of ball aching that you don't need. Where numpty dumb fucks will be like, yo, yo, yo. I know that you're doing the pairings right now. But this is a perfect time for me to talk to my buddy. No, shut your stupid fucking face, asshole. Shut your mouth. For 30 fucking seconds. I just need to read off everybody's name. And also, dumb fuck, the entire 30 seconds. Don't just go, heard my name, that's the only thing that matters. Back to talking to my buddy. Shut up, idiots. Everybody needs to hear their fucking pairings. Everybody's time here is valuable. Shut your fucking mouth, moron. Holy shit, it drives me crazy when somebody walks up and goes, Hey, I didn't hear what my pairing was. Yeah, that's because you were too busy talking. Shut the fuck up and stop trying to trade when I'm doing the pairings, asshole. This isn't an hour-long class, you dumb fuck. This is what you came for, moron. Stop wasting my fucking time. You'll be the same asshole who will come up and complain that the round is taking too long. If you waste mine or anybody else's time, you don't get to complain about how long things are taking. If you are inattentive during the pairings, shut the fuck up. Don't come to me. Don't fucking come to me and complain about how long it's going. There was the one guy, he would show up five minutes late every single fucking time to the event. And I just let it go. And then one day, he comes to me, he's like, man, he's like, can you get them to hurry up? Like, like everyone else is done in the round. And I'm like, no, there's still time in the round. They still have time. And he's going like, oh, and I'm like, you know what, man? You need to shut the fuck up right now. I'm sick of this. I'm not having it from you. You show up five minutes late every single time. Let me explain to you what that means. I know you don't have a job. I know you're not late five minutes every fucking time because you have something to do right before this. You just do it. To, what, to feel like a big man or because you can, and I just let you do it. But understand, there's 20 fucking people here. So that five minutes that you're late, spread that across 20 fucking people. That's over an hour of people's time that you're fucking wasting. And now you're going to come to me and talk about your time being valuable? Shut the fuck up, dude. And like people don't like being talked to like that. So he gets his back up and he's like, ah. And I'm like, no, fuck you, man. And, you know, like for real, I yelled at him. And he walks off, but then he comes back later. He's like, yeah, man, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. And that's what happens a lot of the time when I go off. Because I only go off when I'm right. And you've pushed me to a certain level where it's like, bro, bro, I've had infinite patience with your fucking bullshit. Wrangling all you whiny fucking cockbags so you can enjoy the event that I'm not fucking playing in. I'm here facilitating you playing my favorite game and you're gonna waste my time with your whiny bullshit? Shut the fuck up. I'm here to run the trains on time and they will fucking ride right over you. Shut up. Hey, James P says random things. You underestimate the hatchlings. James P, James P is here to play. He's here to play. He's taking the board. He's coming swinging. <laughs> and random person giving him the props. He's like, I wanted somebody to do that. That's the fun. That happens here a lot. People are like, yo, somebody take the board from me. I love the vibe. So yeah, man. Yeah. Like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. People are fucking entitled as shit. They're like, yo, all I need to know is who I'm playing. I'm fine with everybody else's time being wasted. I don't need to respect anybody else at this event. And it's like, actually, bitch, you do. That's what I'm fucking here to make sure happens. I'm here to make sure that everybody's fucking time is respected. And guess what? My tournaments run on time. When the round ends, I'm there telling you. 
time in the round. And if you're slow playing, I will say, yo, you're slow playing. What life are you at? Can either of you actually win the game in the next five turns? Because if you can't, pack it up, you're fucking done. And it's like, what? Yeah, you don't get to play the last five. If neither of you can explain to me right now how you can actually fucking win this game and say it for a fucking fact, no, I'm not going to sit here, you fucking idiot, while you play your white, blue control deck for another five turns. You're fucking stupid. Like, I honestly want to just tell you how fucking dumb you are. You're not smart enough to play control. You know how I know? You go to time every fucking round you don't have the processing capability to keep somebody under your thumb with control you don't know how to fucking do it for christ's sakes put it down pick up a goblin deck know your fucking lane and stay in it if you're not smart don't play control i know you want to feel smart and so maybe if you can play control against the guys with the brain that works then you'll peel oh hey, look at me i'm fucking winning but for real for real, holy fucking shit. If you run to time every round and you're playing control, you are not good at magic. You are bad at magic. That's how it works. That's how it works. Learn how to play control for fuck's sakes. It's the, mo it's the most nightmarish, time-consuming bullshit, right? So just fucking, just fucking learn. Just fucking learn how to play control, you fucking Magoo idiot. Oh, and don't even, don't even get me the, um... Don't even get me going on the fucking, the crying kids I gotta deal with. Where I gotta fucking deal with like, 12 year old fucking boys crying. And I'm like, for fuck's sakes, man! Holy shit, I gotta go all fucking Marlon Brando. You can act like a man! But I can't do that. I just gotta be like, look man, it's all good. It's all good, you don't need to cry. I just have to tell you that you can't cheat in the tournament. The problem is, I'll be like, yo, I come up to this kid. I didn't even know he's cheating. I didn't even know he's cheating. Because nobody's fucking telling me. Nobody's telling me this kid is cheating. They're <laughs> not telling me. And then I'm out. My buddy's having a smoke. I'm talking to him. He's like, yo, that kid's stacking his deck. I'm like, what? And uh, no, no, somebody else told me. I'm like, somebody said he's stacking his deck. He's like, oh, yeah, I did that against me too. And I'm like, why didn't you tell me, bro? He's like, because I don't give a shit. And he lost anyways. He's stacking his losing. I'm like, it's not about that. I have to know when people are cheating, bro. Come on, man. So yeah, I went and um, I went to the kid and I'm like, bro, people are telling me you're stacking your deck. I'm not, yes, no, look, <laughs> look, I know you're doing it. I Look, man, okay, look, I know you're cheating. You just gotta stop. You just gotta stop. And then you start crying and I'm like, it's not worth crying over, bro. It's just a magic tournament. I'm not kicking you out. But shit, man, stop fucking cheating. Stop fucking cheating, kid. Like, oh, gotta deal with him crying, crying. God, fuck, man, it's bad enough wrangling these dipshit idiots who forget how first strike works. Fuck you, you didn't figure out how first strikes works, dickhead. You've been playing Magic for 25 years, and I know it because I played with you 25 years ago. You know what first strike does? You're just somehow trying to conveniently forget so you can win this fucking game in an event that doesn't matter? Oh my god, there's not even a big prize structure. Fuck you, first place gets one more pack than everybody else in the event. What is this? So yeah. It's just babysitting a bunch of fucking children. Like, honestly, here's how it happened, man. I was just supposed to do the pre-releases. And then my fucking buddy Jay, who was running the event, stepped off and was like, I can't do this no more. So I said, okay, I can step in temporarily. And then temporarily turned into fucking five years. I've seen things, man. I've seen things. Kids eating bathroom pretzels. It... All of it, man. All of it. Like just dealing with dealing with people's fits and all that kind of stuff. All of it. Hey, random person. Thanks for joining the channel membership. Bear your shield with pride. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. Oh, so man. Like for real, for real. There's so many things like running, running, running a tournament, man. Running a tournament. All the stuff you got to put up with from people. It's insane. It's like, bro, pay attention. Bro, pay attention. Just think about the fact that there are other people here. This isn't just about you, man. That's what it was. Tons of people. It's 100% just about them. There's all kinds of cheaters and shit. And like, I just remember particular cheaters where it's like, guy who owns a store doesn't want me to just walk up to him and go, look, I know you, I know you fucking cocksuckers are going out to the parking lot and fucking changing stuff between your decks. 
And I know you're keeping your hand under the table to fucking cheat and shit. Like, all this stuff. So just making blanket announcements about behaviors that won't be tolerated that will get you banned from the tournament. But the entire time I'm making the announcement, I'm dead-eyed lock on the motherfucker I'm talking about. Like, I'm staring at him. I never do that, by the way. I just look at everybody. I crack jokes. But this shit, when I'm talking about kicking people out, I'm just fucking laser beaming the motherfucker. And that's what I do. And then they basically stop coming after those events. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, fuck you, dude. Fuck you, you cheater. It's it's amazing how like every deck you play has like all your rares are on color every time. Playing black red, why well, you have six black red rares? Funny how your buddy's decks are all on color too, and you all always you're just going out for food. You're just going out for smokes, but like everything always really, really lines up. Like really, really, really lines up. It's almost like you guys are absolutely defying the odds time and again. Definitely not suspicious in the slightest or anything. Definitely not like screaming, you fucking cheating clownfish idiots. Like, bro, it's so obvious. It's so obvious when you've been running tournaments forever. Wizards would have lost their fucking shit if they knew about the way I talk to people. And they're like, your tournament, but it's like, I would tell people, shut the fuck up, right? Like at the beginning, yo, Josh, shut your fucking mouth, idiot. Let me finish reading these pairings, you dumb motherfucker. And then you can go back to telling whatever worthless, stupid story you want to, to Nick. Because it doesn't fucking matter. He doesn't even care. He looks fucking bored. And you're going to come up to me and ask me what your pairings are, you fucking asshole. So just shut the fuck up. <laughs> I remember yelling at the one guy and just telling him, like, shut up, shut up. Bro, like seriously, stop talking to your friend for a second so I can tell you who's going to beat your ass, you fucking clownish loser. You suck at this game. I don't know why you keep playing, but at least pay attention so I can tell who is going to fucking clown you today. All right? Shut up. <laughs> I'm a dick. I'm a dick. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Oh, random person looking to instigate. Look at this. It's a bounty. If someone takes the board from James P. in the next five minutes, I'll donate another $5 super chat. Clock is ticking. Dun, dun, dun. Ba -da -da. Joshua, my audio is just messing up for you, bro. Just you, man. Magic players need a dose of reality every now and then. I mean, Buddy owned the store. Like, it was funny. Friday nights, he wasn't there. So I was even more like, shut the fuck up. But like, he would come back sometimes. He'd come back from the front of the store. And he would just gently rest a hand on my shoulder. That was just the indicator of, okay, it's time to calm down, Buddy. <laughs> people, would, people would come up to him and be like, Mike told me to go fuck myself. And he's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he only works here because he can insult the customers. Like, so he would, like, people would say stuff to him and he would just be like, oh, I will talk to him. And then they would walk off, like, smirking at me like, I got you in trouble. But he'd never say anything to me because he knows I wouldn't give a fuck. And I'd just say what I wanted to anyways. Or sometimes he'd be like, yo, buddy complained about whatever. And he's like, what did you say? He's like, he's like ah, fuck that guy, you know? Oh, wait, audio skips every now and then? Oh, shit. Well, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. You can have it like this, or you can have it like this, which I imagine is fucking worse. You tell me. I imagine with one click, I just made the audio echoey and worse, but I don't fucking know. I don't know. Let's get rid of that. You can see. You can see, I never profess to know fuck about audio or video. Himrod, you you knew a guy who would go for drafts. He always magically would pull an Obnixilus every draft. And he would build his deck away from everyone else. There were a number of different cheaters. Some of them were more blatant. It was louder. Is that it? It's worse. Go back. That's the response I expected. Bob, when you were a kid, the owner of the comic store near your house was a mean bastard. He was rude and impatient. That suck. The owner of the game store I went to was nice. He was a nice guy. And he really liked me. So 
I got special treatment. And uh, I like special treatment. It feels good. Makes me feel nice. All right. Well, from those responses, I think it's fairly safe to uh, say that it's confirmed that that audio was worse. I'll take a look at it and see what's going on. See if I can tweak things before the next stream. Uh, it's louder, but its quality is worse. Oh, Timmy, that's how people describe my YouTube channel and live streams compared to other Magic YouTube <laughs> channels and live streams. It's louder, but its quality is worse. Oh, I made myself sad. James P. is saying if someone takes the board, I'll also pay a bounty of 666. So, what is going on? Random now wants James someone to take James P. off the board and is offering a bounty. And James P. is now getting in on the bounty to get himself off the board. What bizarre world is this? What? What? <laughs> Better for earbuds, the second option, this option. You got them good earbuds. Hey, Tyson Gamble, thanks for the super chat, buddy. Should make a 1-1 one, one Lord of the Board and sell it to Post. Why would he want that, Brackenberries? Why would he want that? Man, today has felt like a long day. Bob, I bet he doesn't. I bet you Post Malone doesn't watch my channel. <laughs> That's an easy bet to win. I imagine if he spends his time watching any Magic content, it's probably just enjoyable stuff. I don't think that, like, there's a, there's a certain subset of the Magic player base that's interested in in the magic history that I'm covering, the ongoing history, which is mostly bad. And it's funny because people will come along and be like, bro, you need to stop making negative content. It's bad for magic and whatever. And it's like, bro, I'm just making a particular type of content that covers current events and also is serving as a catharsis for people like me who have a genuine problem. Like somebody's like, yo, you're talking about all this negative stuff, but it's not really going on. Like the game's not really in bad shape. It's like, it is, bro. It, you have no idea. The stuff I'm saying isn't just some hyperbolic insanity. I am presenting it for entertainment value, but I absolutely believe that Wizards of the Coast is making a ton of choices that are very much detrimental for the long-term health of the game, and the game is in a terrible state. So it's like, yo, the sky can't be falling every day. It's like, actually, it can. It's falling very slowly. That's what's going on. It's literally coming down on us. That's it. I'm still talking about this process. That's what's going on. It's not like magic is like, it's dead one day. It's coming back. All of this, right? Like, so yeah. Uh, there's, there's no chance. There's no chance of that. He's not going to have any interest in like, the current mess ups of Wizards of the Coast and whatever, or the kind of stuff I'm covering, because that's the majority of what's going on. There is some exciting stuff that I like interweaved in there, right? But the majority of it is just bad times. It's bad news. Krakening, what are you going on about? What is this crypto stuff? We were talking about crypto before. What are you on about now? Merfolk Bear, stop being modest, bro. You're trying to get me to take my shirt off? <laughs> I'm being realistic, dude. I'm being realistic. I am like a mid-tier magic channel. And like, it's like 20,000 20, people on average will check out one of my videos. Which is a crazy amount of people to me. But on the grander scope of things, isn't a large part of like the YouTube population overall, right? So... I mean, logically, it seems highly unlikely that that kind of overlap would occur. T 
2.6 is a million. 2.6 million is the rumored price. Yeah, that's all we got now is just speculative stuff, right? Who knows? Who knows? It's got to be at least a million. Brackenberry's, oh yeah, Rudy over at Elf Investments. That's a completely different story. He's come by a number of times. He's popped by in live streams and uh, like commenting on videos and stuff. And he's given me, yeah, he's given me shout outs before and stuff too. So we've interacted a number of times digitally or whatever. And I've like interacted with other members of that crew as well. Open Boosters, Edwin, all them guys, they're pretty chill. So yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely aware of what I did before. I doubt he's, I doubt he's watching any of it now, right? But he'd pop in now and again. Maybe something, cra maybe something crazy, crazy is going on. He'll make the rounds. Every once in a while, he'll have like a clip of my stuff in one of his videos. People do that. That's always weird to me. Not like I have a problem with it. It's just weird to me to abruptly see myself in somebody else's video. You know, it's blah, blah, blah. I'm like, hey, that was me. Okay. Actually, I, uh, when I went to the Genesis Championship event, there was a guy there who was like, yo, yo, come here. I want you to see this video. And I was like, walked over and I'm like, I had no idea what video it was he wanted to show me. No clue on earth. Could have been anything on earth. It turns out it's a YouTube video. It turns out it's an alpha investment video. So he's like, check it out. And we start watching it. And then all of a sudden in the middle of it, I'm like, that's me. Like I saw a clip from me in there and I'm like, huh, huh. what are the fucking chances of that? The odds, it's hilarious, right? But yeah, people have used clips of me and I, I haven't seen them all all over the place. People have used my videos like YouTube will tell me you got like if you want to, you could copyright the claim this video because they're using this much of your footage. And I'm just looking and go, whatever. People are going to do whatever, man. It's all good. It's all good. I don't fucking care. Right. Nathan, what's up, buddy? Coming by for the strong language. You're missing. You're, it's, it's a weird one, bro. The board has been odd. You would have enjoyed it. Random comes out and he's like, I'm taking the board. Nobody can take it from me. And then James P is like, I, I'm going to take it from you. After after him waiting a long time for somebody to play with him. And then, <laughs> and then Random turns around and is like, I'm going to do a $5 bounty on somebody taking the board from James P. And then James P gets impatient. He's like, I'm going to do a bounty of $6 for somebody to take the board from me. And it's like, what, what is going on? What? What universe is this? Post Malone just bought the most expensive magic card ever. And that, that is news for me to cover. And I've just been ranting about tournaments. And you missed a bunch of fun, strong language. But what do you guys think? You want? Do you think I should upload this stream to Hatcher afterwards? Shall I upload this one? Is it, is it worth putting up? Uh, Bracken, you enjoyed my, oh, you enjoyed me on Kitchen Table. I was actually thinking about that earlier today. That was a lot of fun, man. That was a lot of fun. The language was wild. I didn't know they didn't swear in their stuff, right? So I was not expecting, I was, I was not expecting, um, I was not, what, no, that's not the right word. What am I looking for here? I was not, uh, I was not aware of how they operated. So I just leapt in and did my normal thing. I asked if it was cool to swear and they're like, do your thing. And I just went off, right? He edited out a bunch of shit. You didn't even get to hear everything. He edited some, some stuff out. Hey Montoya, you're mostly a lurker and don't comment much, but you appreciate my content. Thanks buddy. Uh, Thanks for being a good person and not being afraid of standing up to stupid assholes. Sorry, I can't support you more. Bro, I appreciate the support you've already given, man. Don't even trip. And thanks for the kind words. I appreciate it, bro. Nathan, yeah, I mean, Random's the one who made up the bounty concept. But as far as I understand, yes. It's if you take the board, then they do additional super chats that are stapled onto yours. Although they might have put a time frame on it that has also elapsed. My sense of time feels a little off today. I don't know if there's anything circulating in my blood that might account for that. <laughs> oh, Juglum says every stream I do is quality. Well, thanks, buddy. That's nice of you to say. Tyson Gamble says you should always upload. Thanks, buddy. You have a fucking boxer's name, eh? You know that, right? Like, for real. I feel like I could fight you and super punch out. Do you know what I mean? 
learn your moves on the Super Nintendo, okay? He's going to do like three jabs like this. He's going to come down from the left, and then he's going to try and spit in my eye. But that's when I right hook him right in the fucking ball bag, and I give him the fucking rope-a-dope in the fucking junk, son. You know what I mean? Take a gamble on that one, Tyson. It's not Mike Tyson. It's Tyson Gamble. <laughs> you hit him in the gamble sack. Waffle, yeah! Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Blue Cats made that. Does this make Post Malone Frodo? Oh, Bob's asking the real questions. That's a good question. That's a, is he Frodo or Frodo? No. Hmm. Al, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when they said it was going to call child services on kitchen table for investing in Pokemon. <laughs> hey, Super Duper, what's up, buddy? Uh, set's looking better and better every week. Thanks, man. Wait until I get this whole, like, wall painted up, bro. And then I'll be able to, like, green screen the whole thing. I'm gonna, at a certain point, that's what's going to happen. It's, it's the long-term plan for this room. Yeah, tis Laura, I feel you. The swearing actually is a really difficult part for me. Like, when I'm live talking to people at a certain point, it just starts to, it starts to come out. I don't think I could make it through a two-hour live stream on my own without swearing, bro. Like, accidentally. It's just part of my conversation. I can shut it down when I really need to, but to, like, just be chill in a live stream and casual, and what, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Nathan says, so just in case... This is 66, 67 for the board. Randoms 5 and James P6. Let's see how this settles out. That's funny. He's like, I'm making sure it happens. All right, you're Lord of the Board. You're Lord of the Board. Now we'll see if the delayed triggers fucking resolve from James P. And random. Okay. All right. Hold on. I gotta write that number. Oh, it went from devilish to heavenly. It went from 666 to 777. Oh, look at that. Nathan, you and you and James P are doing a, the heaven and hell 69. <laughs> that's not a nice thing to say. Oh, well, whatever. That's what's happening. You guys, that's that's it. I said it. And I'm the magic historian. That makes it the truth. <laughs> that makes it the truth. <laughs> <laughs> bragging berries oh five or six coats you know what i didn't even think about that i just thought like one coat but yeah that, that would probably be that'd probably be different oh random person says i ain't playing there it is the bounty fulfilled and james p with his bountiful bounty getting six 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 up it says who will be next time is all relative in space oh you're going doctor who up in here up in here. Casino says, this is the most money I've seen being thrown at one person that hasn't taken their shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> I do all my whoring with my mouth. Wait a minute, that doesn't sound better. That's not better than taking my shirt off. That makes it sound like I suck dick for money. Yeah, you got fucking bills to pay, right? Whatever magic cards get expensive. You can fucking buy some mouthwash. Ah, time to take on a career change. <laughs> Let me show you where the real magic is. It's in my mouth hole. Let's make that sadness in your ball bag history. <laughs> so stupid. So <laughs> stupid. <laughs> oh, Random says, how big a donation you get? Perps, OnlyFans access. How much would it blow your mind if it just did turn out that I had, like, an OnlyFans? And it's like, he's been selling pictures of his butthole and stuff for years. And it's like, how did we not know? Whoa, wait, that's that's what he actually does? And the YouTube is the side thing? <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I'll take two. I'll buy two, please. Can I get... The deepness of the abyss. I really like the look of that picture. Uh, if you stare into it long enough, the abyss stares back into you. <laughs> God. 
Astrid says, I just want to know what the box with names is about. You know what? For a second, I didn't know what you meant. You mean this box with names. The box of glory? Right? That's what I assume. And these names? Well, how it works is, whoever's lord of the board at the end of the stream, I have a stack of art cards over there. So, for example, there's a bunch right here, right? Whoever's lord of the board at the end of the stream, I sit down, and with my very masculine hands, I write their name on and the date on the back of the card. Because they were the lord of the board and they won. So they are commemorative commemorative art cards. I mean, I like looking at the art cards. And these remind me of all the good times we've had together. And for those glorious, glorious individuals that have made it into this box and won lord of the board five times, they make it onto the roll of mega glory. Right? Ba, 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 ba. And this is the current roll. This is the current honor roll of mega glory. People who have won the Lord of the Board five times since the inception of the Box of Glory. We have had the Tome of Champions. We've had other things, but nothing has tickled my fancy the same as the Box of Glory. I enjoy multiple aspects of it. One is watching this stack grow. Every one of these represents a live stream. And thinking about all the time we hang out and chill and do all this fun shit and just getting to joke around and do all this, it's massively amazing to me and when you all have forgotten me and i'm not funny anymore and i'm sad and alone i'll have all of these to remember the good times when i actually mattered to somebody <laughs> let me go get my emo wig and i'll like put on some like uh eye makeup <laughs> The OnlyFans is just me taking dumps on magic cards. <laughs> that would work. That would work. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, you guys are fun times. I really enjoy getting to do this. So having these as I... Like, this, this is something that I keep for myself. It makes me happy. And people like the acknowledgement as well. So it's a double win. You know, and I can just stroke this big, white, firm box. <laughs> oh, you know what that sound is? That's the sound of Papa needs more root beer. Daddy needs more root beer. Hold on. Hold on. Just going to the store. I got a bag of smokes. I'll be back. Y'all, I'm glad I went out to refill this root beer when I did, man. Carly's, uh, <clears throat> Carly's making these crazy little uh, flaky wrapped things for us to eat. It's like beef and cheese in the middle. She called them something wellies, beef wellies or whatever. So it's going to be good. It's going to be good. She makes some good food. She makes some good food.
Mill master, if you live in a glass house, do throw stones, bro. You got to, you got to, like, the best defense is a good offense. You got to show up at people's houses, hit them with rocks, and be like, don't even think about fucking with my glass house. Because listen up, I can fucking see you coming through my walls. So, don't even think about it. I throw all the stones. <laughs> throw them first. Throw them first, throw them fast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Waffle, you gotta have a huge, you gotta have a huge YouTube channel to get like a Bark sponsorship, bro. Moxman tried to look into that a while back and coca Calls are like, you gotta have like 300,000 people or else we don't care. So, no Bark sponsorship anytime soon. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. I may not have that much in, in terms of corporate sponsors, but the ones I do tend to be cool card games lately. For real, man. Card games keep fucking showing up at my door and being like, hey, bro, we was thinking you might like to play this game. And it's like, yeah, I might. And it's like, we was thinking you might like to get paid and play this game. And I'm like, I'm liking this even more. Let's talk, right? So uh, maybe there's another one in the works. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe I got another sponsorship coming. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-
I'm glad you're enjoying it. I appreciate the enthusiasm. When it comes down to it, doing this, the overwhelming response I get from people is positive. Like it's, it's incredibly positive to the point where I consider a 96% approval rating to be a failure. Like that's the level. I realized that when I was walking along today to go get some lottery tickets for me and Carly. We each bought one of them $6 Lotto Max tickets. Ooh, maybe we'll go win some money. So um, on my way over to that, I thought I'm like, man, my standards are really high. Like if a video I put out gets less than a 96, like if it gets a 96% approval rating, as soon as it goes below 97, I'm like, Hmm, it's not good. And it's just like, what are you talking about? 96.2 isn't good, you crackhead, right? So it's amazing. I get actually very few negative comments and the overwhelming majority of people thumbs up my video. Actually, usually how it goes is I'll have more new subscribers than I do thumbs down on any given video. That's the level of how well it goes. People just watch you go, this is great, I'm enjoying myself or whatever. <laughs> Normally it's 97, 98, 99% approval rating overall. So I'm just laughing at myself today going, how did I get to the point where I consider a 96.2 and go, that's not good. And it's like, yes it is. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I did videos back in the day where I got way worse ratings, way worse. <laughs> Some of them really triggered people. There was the one that was like, the, the worst rating I ever got was like 50-50. And I was like, wow, this video is a thousand thumbs up and a thousand thumbs down. Was that the one about MTG Lions suing wizards or something? It was some something like forever ago. Random person, gotta run, perp, stay real. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for coming by for the fun. Have a good one. Krakening, yeah, you need a lottery ticket win to be able to afford some Commander Masters. That's true. That's true. Kodak, what's the lottery? Your yours is for a 1.5 billion. I don't even know what it's for. I didn't do it based on what the um, jackpot is. I just did it like on a random lark where I was just kind of like, I just said to Carly, I think I'm gonna get a lottery ticket, and she's just like, I want one too. I don't even remember the last time I bought one. It's just been forever. So, uh, uh. It looks like it might not be that much because it looks like somebody just might have won it so it's it might just be for like a couple million which is still a ton of money but now that you said like 1.5 billion it's like my dong small no matter what you know how much is yours for 1.5 billion dollars well millions with an m double digits single digit maybe Maybe double digit millions. <laughs> you know, like 1.5 billion versus 12, 12 million, 10 million, 6 million. I don't know. Enough that if I wanted, I'd be happy. That's for sure. That's for sure. Waffle, seven numbers and a bonus ball. Yup. Yup. The odds are horrifically bad, right? Horrifically bad. Uh, Kodok, you're going to have some food? All right, buddy. See you later. Thanks for coming by and hanging out, bro. Seth, you got... You juggle them. You got two tickets. What? Let me guess. Two tickets to paradise. Huh? <laughs> I bet you didn't expect that reference, motherfucker. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, no, you didn't. <laughs> well, well, yeah, it is bad odds. I mean, you don't play, you don't play the lottery because uh, the numbers and odds are good. It doesn't exist. Lotteries are a, are a willing tax, right? Which is just a tax you willingly pay for the illusion, for the hope. Where you can just be like, tonight I can I can beat off thinking about having tacos made out of gold foil. You know, because I got that lottery ticket. And as long as I don't look at the numbers, then it's still Schrodinger's cat and I can stay hard. Right? Let's be clear. I'm talking about the lottery win, not getting hard from looking at a cat. I know some people 
I'm probably baked out of the gorge or something, and they might not get what I'm saying. But try and follow what I'm fucking saying here, okay? Zircon, the odds of winning the Mega is about the same as pulling the one out of one ring. So you're saying there's a chance. We can do it. We can do it. Kraken, and you watch me in the shower? Oh, shit. Do you, am, I, am I in a plastic bag in the shower? Hey, wait. Whoa, wait. You might be trying to put my hands on. Well, you know, just one. Just one. Just a little bit of shabby. And put, put the phone up to your chest. Put the phone. You should work out more. This, this this should be firmer right here. <laughs> I'm just starting my own ASMR channel. Hold on. Psst, 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 psst. There's a storm rolling in. Wyvern's good for something. I can use the packs to make the storm show up. ASMR some pretty silly shit. That's it, hypnotic. That's it. That's the cat in the box. But it's not that. It's about staying hard for gold leaf tacos. Oh, I love the internet. I love it. It's ridiculous. You, n I never would have believed this was possible when I was a kid. It would have been just like, you know that you can just... Like, set things up and then broadcast yourself to the internet and just say the most absurd, ridiculous bullshit. You can go on yelling tirades about whatever you want, ranting about just insane crap, and you can just talk about games that are your hobbies and whatever else, and other people will just come and hang out with you, and you can just have a good time. Like, what the fuck? This is the best. It's awesome. It's amazing. It ain't for everybody, because a lot of I mean, good luck, right? Not every <laughs> Not everybody's down. With this kind of a concept, but I love it. I fucking love it, right? Shit gets too professional. I kind of like tune the fuck out. I don't care. Too corporate, too professional. I'm bored. I'm bored. I like shit to be a little wild, a little fucking raw, a little crazy, you know? You know? Huh. <sighs> If wizards could just stop screwing up magic and I could just go back to being happy that way, I think life could pretty much be perfect, right? Hmm. I know I've mentioned it before, but I'm going to mention it again. Dave the Diver, if you guys haven't played it, they put an annoying amount of work into this game to the point where I'm just like, there's always different things going on. I'm like, you put so much work into this game. Sometimes the extra work you put in is just getting in the way. Let me play. But there's a bunch of cool moments, honestly. It's a fun little game with a lot of different elements to it. I got like a fish farm going now. I got a vegetable farm going, a rice farm. I got, a, I'm doing all the diving, running a restaurant. There's so many different aspects to the game. And it's not some like $80, check it out, the game's not even finished, but you got to pre-order this special one if you want to make sure that your dude actually doesn't have like a two inch dong. If you want the actual six inch dong, you got to order the ultra version. But if you want to have an eight inch fat schlonger, then you've got to ultra the ultra megadon one. But then your guy doesn't come with one arm and you got to pay for the extra arm DLC to touch it with. You know, like that's what it feels like, where it's like, well, we're selling you the right to buy DLC off of us. You know, I'm looking for like a game, you know, like where it's just a game where I just pay you and then play it. And it's like, yeah, but no, we take things from the game and you got to keep paying us. No, 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 no. Like I just pay you one time and then I just own the game and play it. And it's all done. Like it's all just there. Like it's just there and it's a whole game, right? <laughs> that's it. So... 
some games deliver on such a level where you go, that's like epic. Dave the Diver's epic. Uh, Habanero, Stacklands dropped a new expansion. Four bucks. Stacklands is another good one. That game is cheap, and it was surprisingly enjoyable. Surprisingly. Cool, man. That's a random sentence. You're feeling random, are you? It's a, it is indeed. It is indeed. Krakening, who reset the chat? What? I think you did it in your mind. Yeah, Juggum, that did not go well for them. Bob, what was my favorite set in the last five years? El Drain did a really good job of having a bunch of exciting cards. It did push too far with the fire design, Oko, uh, Fires of Invention. There's some like stuff that's too strong in there, and they did push too far. But there was a bunch of fun stuff there, and the story for El Drain was genuinely satisfying. They found a way to instead of giving us this huge the multiverse is in danger the multiverse is in danger the mo it's like okay 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 they went here's what's going on on Aldrain. basically the kenrith's parents have been turned into a stag because oko one planeswalker is seeking to cause discord between different factions on this plane of existence to make up for his like parent issues as well as just for his own amusement and so then you have a few other planeswalkers that are pitted against him but not in most cases directly at first they're just being manipulated by him so you have a genuinely interesting story where a bunch of cool stuff happened we didn't get the proper ending to Garouk's curse being removed the way we were supposed to but we did get a cool way of having his curse removed they I felt like they earned it while they didn't actually give us what we were supposed to originally get, they went, Garuk's curse was eaten by a stronger curse. That is a really fucking cool idea. Like, for real, when it comes to stories, I loved that. Garuk has this curse running through his veins that is destroying him. There has been a hedron. Uh, Jace inserted, like, a hedron fragment into Garuk's skin to keep the corruption under control because Liliana corrupted him using the chain veil. And it changed Garuk's nature to the point where any animals that he bonds with, they get corrupted too. And so then he has to put them down because it's just this whole thing of despair for him. And he's hunting Liliana. So he's trying to get rid of this curse. And he ends up on Eldrain. And he ends up with the Cauldron of Eternities literally eating the curse from him. So the curse couldn't be cured, but it could be eaten by a more powerful, hungry curse. What an awesome concept. A witch's cauldron that's even more cursed than Liliana's magic that just consumed it. That is really, really sweet. I like that. Creator Zah says, Today I made some delicious spam. Masubi, and I wanted to share some spam Masubi. What is Masubi? And you wanted to share that. Also really excited for the new Aldrain set and white crater hoof. I'm excited for the new Aldrain set as well. I'm caught up on what Masubi is. I've been playing Dave the Diver, and you make a lot of, like, sushi with that. So you got me thinking of, like, spam sushi. I don't like sushi. And I I, I don't think I like spam. I'm pretty sure I don't. Like, 99%. What up, Fulgore? Millmasters is a story for Ninja Scroll. I, bro, I mean, when it comes to stories, there's only, like what, like 10 different stories for real? <laughs> you know, there's like 10 different stories you can tell and then just details along the way. I rock what you're about to email me about Pulse Malone and the One Ring. Well, thanks for thinking of me, but apparently I found out pretty quick. Uh, get the devil out. Uh, there we go. There we go. Hmm. What a wild world. Post Malonage. One out of one ring ownage. Fulgar, you bought a BFZ pack the other day for funsies and opened an expedition Misty Rainforest. Well, I imagine that lived up to the funsies feeling, didn't it?
That's a sweet score, man. Those expeditions look nice. Yeah, Felon Embercleave. Red Rush was like hardcore in the days of Eldraine. Embercleave's no joke. Torbrand was nothing to sneeze at either. But I'm looking forward to a return to Eldraine. I definitely dug it. Cued, uh, he bought it, Post Malone bought it off the dude who got it, as far as I understand. But there was, I, I think, like, they had a lawyer in between to set it up initially or something. Like, there was people in between doing some kind of brokering or whatever and making sure the card got graded, which is good. It didn't just, like, the guy didn't just get it and then get hosed by somebody else, you know? And then somebody else is like, huh, I made a ton of money by taking advantage of somebody who got this who didn't know. It's a fun, it's a fun fairy tale feeling story that works really well for Wizards marketing as well. So overall, it's a win for them. There's a white crater hoof. Yep, there is. It's a flying one. So it gives flying instead of trample. Jago, you're excited about the gingerbread homies? Yeah, man. The gingerbread people in the trailer with Garuk, I loved that. I loved that. And I'm ready to be hyped about some magic stuff again, you know? I'm looking forward to Friday. I get to go and play in the Commander Masters uh, event on Friday. That's been confirmed, by the way, Nathan. Confirmed for good. And my buddy's coming with me, too. I talked to him about it, so we're going down. You're the man, by the way. So yeah, Moonshaker Calvary is a it's a big beast, bro. I'm gonna put that in the cube for sure. For sure. <laughs> Millmaster, then I guess you're good to stop. Micah, that leaves you out in the cold though, buddy. So yeah, with the Eldraine, I'm looking forward to being being hyped up again. And uh, there's going to be five Eldraine installments of the story, which means that that's going for Fantasy Geographic. And speaking of which, me and Carly actually started working on the next Fantasy Geographic with video too. So I've got like, I'm covering old school lore while I'm waiting for Wizards to release the new lore about the new set. So later this month, we'll have five lore videos over on Fantasy Geographic. And the work that we're doing right now on the on the story that I'm doing right now will come out next month. Post Malone should sample a Lord of the Rings song and make a rap about buying the card. That'd be hilarious, man. That's a great idea. I'm hoping that the Throne of Eldraine lore isn't going to suck. The la the, the way they ended the Phyrexian War sucked. If it, it sucked. So I'm hoping the writing is going to be better, but I'm not holding out much hope. Do you know what I mean? Uh, how do I think Moonshaker Cavalry compares to the Crater Hoof? I, I mean, it cuts both ways. Flying is a form of evasion, and trample is almost a form of evasion in that you just can't stop me from getting through. I'm going straight over you, right? So, depending on the power level you're bringing in, trample can be better because flying can be chumped. I, as If I have 1-1 one, one donks, I can throw birds in the way of your guys, and your boosts don't matter. But, move, like, the, um, the crater hoof is given trample... So it's like you got to have enough tough. You basically with trample it becomes you have to have enough toughness to soak up all of the damage I'm swinging at you with. Otherwise, it's spilling into your life total, right? Like that's it. That's it. Blue cats, you'll start listening to Post Malone if he makes magic songs. <laughs> I think a bunch of people would. I mean, obviously, tons of people listen to him already. 
Oh, ball falcon. Yeah, puppies are fun, but they also, they're learning about life and they're, they're scared and whatever else. Man, that's fun, though. I hope you're having a good time overall. Felon, you think the writing will be better because they just need to steal fairy tales without stepping on Disney's toes? They're going to have some storyline running through it where the two Kenriths are at odds. That's all I know so far, is that Will and Rowan Kenrith have been de-sparked and they are now at odds. I like the de-sparking of Planeswalkers, most of them, because it makes Planeswalkers feel less common. And them feeling less common makes them feel more special from a flavor standpoint. Never really liked when they introduced the Planeswalker card type because I'm like, well, we're the Planeswalkers. We're the ones. So calling them up is like bringing a friend in. It's kind of a little little wonky flavor-wise. Kensuke, Wall of Ice, and Wall of Stone. That's 15 points of trample. You're sucking up right there, bro. What wall blocks flyers? There's tons of walls that block flyers. Like wall of fog, wall of air, wall of swords. There's a bunch more too. I don't remember wall off the top of my head, but there's like there's a ton of walls in magic. I'm trying to live the dream. I'm gonna build a rolling stones deck. All walls can attack. Oh whoa. Are uh, D-Spark Planeswalkers still strong, stronger than regular mages? Definitely. And they also will have plot armor that will keep them alive, too, if Wizards doesn't want to kill the characters, which they never do. They Wizards never kills any characters for real now because they don't know... Um, they don't know how to make compelling characters and they're afraid of getting rid of something marketable. <laughs> what up, Callaway? How you doing, buddy? Nobody knows for sure how much he paid. It's all just guesstimations and stuff. Could be anywhere from a million to two and a half, bro. Could be anything like that. Was there a white dragon that was a wall? No, that's actually Sunweb. If you take a look at the artwork, that white dragon is actually being ensnared by the Sunweb. But... You can be forgiven for thinking it's a dragon because it really does look like that from all kind of any kind of cursory glance. And there's no reason to cursory do more than a cursory glance of a garbo flying wall from like Mirage or whatever. It's like one white, I think it's like one white and three for a five, six flyer and it can only block creatures with flying. So like a wall of swords was one white and three for a three, five flyer. So it's just a slightly improved wall of swords. It's not good. It's not good. Man, I know a lot of magic cards from back in the day, bro. Illusionary Wall. Oh, yeah, that's garbage. That's like... Illusionary Wall, if I remember properly, is one blue and four for a 7-4 flyer with first strike that has a cumulative upkeep of one blue. You know, that might be a fun idea for a stream. We could, uh, you guys could say card names, look them up or whatever, and then I could say everything I can remember about the card, and then I could search it up and put it on the screen, and we could see how much I remember of old cards. I could pick a set or something, and I'd be like, bam, name cards, and we'll see... Test the wizard's memory. Test the historian's memory or whatever, right? Do I think Wizards is making a concerted effort to revitalize standard? I mean, they're not making it the focus of the Pro Tour and stuff, so I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I think they're making some effort, but they're literally going, let's make standard 50% longer so we can just say, these products are still standard legal. Please keep buying them. Do I think they'll ever add a new color to magic? It's impossible. It's impossible to add a new color to magic without making it auto broken and just whatever. So no, I don't. I don't. I really don't. Kansuki, how about I try and draw the card from memory? I mean, 
I can't draw for shit, but illusionary wall was like a, it was like a, a fucking brick wall across the sky. Blue cat, damn right, I'm too wise. <laughs> Did I know Living Wall had to be altered before they'd print it on a card? I can't say for certain. It feels like I might have known that, but um, but uh, it might just be me going, oh, now that I'm reading it. Yeah, I remember being horrified by Living Wall when I first saw it. Ray of Erasure. Is that even that old, bro? What are you doing? Like Odyssey or something like that? What is Ray of Erasure? Is Ray of Erasure the one that's like one white and four and has flashback? Does it show like a guy all like, er, and there's like a white beam coming down? Am I thinking of the right card? Oh no, Ray of Erasure is from Ice Age. It's one blue. It shows a guy standing there while there's a beam hitting him. It mills one card, and then you draw a card during the next upkeep? Yeah, that's Ice Age. The guy, I think the guy's like, yeah, he's got like fucking a horned helmet on. He's like wearing armor, I think. Yeah, this seems like it would be a fun game. Cause yeah, at first my brain started to cast around to other cards. That's wild. Did I get it? Did I nail it? Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. What's my favorite creature type? I mean, I loved Thalids, you know? All that stuff. Building a Thalid deck from Fallen Empires. I remember like it it totally tripped my uncle out that I had a 5,000 box of cards and he would just pull out a card and, and I would just start telling him. He, he'd say like one thing about the card, like the name or whatever, and I'd just start telling him all the details. And he's like, he just kept trying to find cards. And it was like, then there was no, you weren't going to find a single card that I couldn't tell you everything about, right? So that was then. That was then. But that, yeah, that seems like a, that seems like it could totally be a fun stream concept. Let me make a note of that. I'm gonna write this down, and we'll see if I even remember what the hell card guessing means when I see it <laughs> tomorrow. Card guessing. There we go. Callaway, I don't have, like, um, like, I'm not saying that I have an encyclopedic knowledge of magic, because I don't. So when it comes to, like, these one-offs, hey, do you know by heart what the card that they made for the Japanese DCI Center is that there's only one of? Nope. Never needed to. Not relevant. The earliest years of magic, the further you go back, the more I'm going to know, right? That's how that goes. So... I don't fucking know every stupid magic card that's ever been made. They make tons of dog shit cards nowadays. I remember a bunch of the dog shit from the earliest days. But yeah, we go back to like like the first chunk of the 90s, X number of years. I'm going to know virtually everything. This, yeah, this is a fun game idea. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. But for now, I got to get going. So thanks for coming and hanging out. I'm going to die for now, and I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow.